Right, because makeup creates a fantasy, it does made, it not? It does. Look, men fall for it too, though. I, sure I'll do. go out. Look, you had a dude wearing makeup. No, well, I know some. Uh, I'm just saying. No, you I said, definitely know a few okay. out here in Hollywood. I was like, we've got makeup. We're the same <laughs> foundation. Look, Hilarious. But that's, it, it's an enhancer. Sometimes, like depending on the day. Sometimes I just want to be thug life. Go to the store real quick in my sweats. Grab something to eat and chill. Next day, I'm like, you know what? I want to feel like Beyonce or whoever might want to look like. Do the fake lashes and the this and the that. Yeah, and sometimes just, you want to add the glam. But the coldest part is, look, I'll post a picture on Instagram looking just like I just woke up like this, really. But then I'll turn around and go out with my friends with seven pounds of makeup on my face. And I'll get 38 likes in seconds. Exactly. But would you From say, all the men that's told me, hey, you know what? I don't like a girl who wears a lot of makeup. But you don't like my pictures when I don't wear any exactly. makeup, but when I'm cake face, y'all are like, hey, boo, what's cake good? Whoop de whoop. So I got to stop by Earl Shive <laughs> and get my foundation corrected. 323 965 1600 is the number to dial. The phone lines are on fire right now. Let's go to our first caller. Who's in the building? Holla. Hey. Hey, what's up? Who is this? What's going on, Zoe? It's me, Jay Mitchell. Thanks for the shout-out. Jay Mitchell, yes. Please go buy her music, man. DanCamp.com. The EP is called Love Kills the Demon. Jay Mitchell, yeah. please support her. Talk to me about this beauty thing and the insecurity or the presumed insecurity of sisters to go without. Well, I feel like for me as a black woman, you know, I live in L.A., I live in Hollywood, I work in the music industry and entertainment, so it's something that I'm very hypersensitive to because I feel like I'm combating it on a day-to-day. You know, there is a lot of pressure, you know, on black women to conform to European beauty standards, and if you don't conform to them, it's kind of, you get labeled with all of these kind of, I don't know, stereotypical notions, and... um I feel like a lot of black women, you know, I've been natural for 10 years, and I feel like it's a rebellion. I went natural when I was 16 years old. I went natural in high school when it was a big-time no-no, and I was teased and mocked, mostly by black men. So when we're talking about um, a lot of women want to be beautiful for our men, it's a natural inclination. Like, it feels good, you know, when I have my man, he's looking at me like, you look good, baby, But but for black women... And for black people living under the culture of white supremacy, that kind of gets misconstrued. Where I don't feel like black men really generally support um, black women who are embracing their natural beauty. And being natural, a lot of women are lighting their skin because we all know that there's a notion in the black community that light skinned women are more attractive. Mm. I see it every day. And maybe it's because I'm in Los Angeles. I don't know how it is in other communities, but I know in LA, it's huge, you know. I don't have any problem having a date or anything due to my confidence level. But for other sisters that aren't able to display the level of confidence that I have, I see them getting passed up, looked over. I see them adorning weaves and makeup, especially black women in the industry. And, mm. and you know what? And it's important because these are the, the images that every all the other little black girls in other parts of the world see. So every time you turn on your TV, it's always a silly weave. Or it's always a light-complected sister with curly hair, good so-called good-textured hair. You know, so that's all you see. So I remember when, we, when me and my little sister were kids growing up, we would put towels on our head because mm. we would see um, um, the Pantene commercial. You see the white woman just blowing her hair all beautifully, And we were young young girls absorbing this, and we would go and we would put towels on our head and run around the house flipping our towels, you know, pretending Mm. that we had hair like that. Mm. And I don't know where that was coming from. You know, I remember throwing away my black Barbie dolls when I was a kid because, you know, that black women have to conform to European beauty standards in order to be attractive. Got it, got it. You know what, Jay? I appreciate you for calling in. I'm going to tell everybody, please go get her music, bandcamp.com. Thank you. Right? Go buy the album right now. It's ridiculous. 
Love Kills the Demon, an, M, an, an, an EP by Jay Mitchell. Go support her. Appreciate yes. your words. Thank you so much. Thank you. Again, we have other callers. Let's go. Who do we have on the line right now? Hello? Yeah, what's up? Oh, ain't too much, man. Hey, a quick thing about the whole beauty thing. See, women, they look towards men. Like, what women do is they try to present themselves in the way that a man would appreciate. You know, they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't listen to us as far as the individual things they put on, but they try things, and then they see what we react to. But sometimes what we react to is not what they have worn or how they look. It's their confidence. It's the energy that they exude. It's not necessarily... So, so hold that thought. Hold that thought. I think the sisters want to challenge you on that. Uh, Brandy? Whitney? Uh, <clears throat> no, I um, I actually, you kind of got me at the end there when you said the thing about confidence because you said that women um, present the, themselves the way that a man, they think that a man will like. Well, of course. Yeah. Because we're trying to attract men. So are and, you saying that black men want sisters to present themselves in a westernized white look in order for men, black men, to feel attracted to black women. Is I, that what you're saying? I think that yep. first and foremost, men want to be in the presence of a woman who is attractive, period. Whatever that look is, whichever look she's chosen to take. Um, I do think that there are black men in, in society right now, especially, that, that do not appreciate um, a natural black woman. And I'm saying this coming from the perspective of I've done it all. I've had permed hair, jerry curled hair, no hair, afro hair, weave, braids, dookie braids, micro braids, like every style <laughs> <Hilarious>. there is. <laughs> I've had it. Hold on one second, bro. Let, let and, anyone come to you. And for me, it, it was it was never a matter of, oh, I feel like in order to be more attractive, I need to look more European. It was simply a style choice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a way of me expressing myself in the same way that you go to your closet, you chip, you pick out a green shirt, a black hat. You know, hey, maybe I want, like, big curly hair. Maybe I want a, a short, a teeny weeny afro. And I think that just because a woman chooses that, you can't assume that it's because she doesn't have self-esteem or she's Brother? trying to conform. Brother, finish your thought. Yeah, so basically, um, I think is that the women feel more confident in themselves when they look more European because that is the kind of standard that they feel hmm. themselves makes themselves become more attractive. So when that happens, the energy she exudes to the man is that of an attractive energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, really and truly, as men, we don't care about the individual small things. A woman can actually put on no makeup. If she's naturally attractive on the inside, I'm going to shine outwards. But what if she's not naturally attractive? Like, that's a thing. That's <laughs> well, naturally attractive. Well, he, but he said something key, and that was on the inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a, a naturally attractive person inwardly, that's a cold motherfucker right there. Right. And they can pull off anything. They can yeah, pull they can off do some things. They want. Listen, we got to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're coming back with Veronica Conway. You know who she is, author of the Black Mastery program we've been promoting. And she's going to talk about this stuff, too. So, again, can we link the black woman's self-esteem to her makeup kit? The beauty industrial complex. We'll be back on The Voice of Reason. Holla! Even from a tender young age, Countess Vaughn has been a fixture on countless TV favorites such as 227 and Moesha. The latter launched the successful spinoff, The Parkers, making Countess one of the first African-American females to land her very own sitcom. But the beauty and the dream would soon begin to unravel. It's crazy how one day everything's fine and the next thing, the simplest things can, can mess up your life. Working in the industry for so long, I've always had different looks, so I'm used to wearing wigs. In about 2004, my hairstylist introduced me to front lace wigs, and I fell in love with them immediately. You have a full hairline. I was wearing it 24-7. Five years later, the drama came in. The red flag was the oozing from my ears from my forehead, the whole nape around my head, the pus. It had a horrible smell. It was painful. 
I let this go by for six months. What I didn't realize was I, I, I had a bad reaction to the glue that I used to apply the wig. I went to a dermatologist, but he didn't let me know long term there would be any problems. Now I have discoloration. People assume, you know, do you have vitiligo? Anywhere where you would apply the wig and put tape on, I'm lighter in those areas. And I use makeup to cover it up. The skin under my eyes peeled because of the glue. The skin came off my ears. With the eyeliner, I'm literally drawing in my hairline. Because of the hair situation, I was embarrassed. It was just, you have to be at home and be bald. I, I had to go through this in order to teach my, my, my little one that you gotta love yourself before anybody else will. I just want it to look natural. Please welcome actress Countess Vaughn to the show. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for sharing your story because yeah. I think it, as, as women we all share this hair thing. You know, mm -hmm. they, they try to tell us we're not our hair, but you know, we, we are our hair. Oh, it, yes. It makes a big difference what style you wear. Mm -hmm. So, pretty much with the lace fronts, with wigs, you're applying the glue around, around the edges, around the nape, um, glue or tape. Mm -hmm. And what we don't realize is when we're doing this, when you're lifting it up, you're taking off a layer of skin each time. <clears throat> well, it still didn't stop her from wigging up for that show. <laughs> That's the thing I was like, okay. I'm just, you know, well, maybe all of the undergrowth has been ravaged by the, the weeds diet. Um, listen, I think it's tough, man. Sisters, I mean, I'm doing research for this show. It made me think. Sisters got it tough. We do. In, in terms of you got our expectations, then you've got expectations that trump ours, namely your workplace. Mm -hmm. Let's, huh? Because you might do like Brandy said. You know, Brandy be on some more, well, you know, I, this is just a look I wanted to go for, and I, I changed because I felt like changing. But when you work for corporate America, they say, listen here, uh, India Irie. Come back in here smelling like pajuli and, and <laughs> beads and shells and shit. You know, we're not doing that, okay? You know, I, I don't want to see no more corn rolls, you know. only You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they may, you know, Im, you know, put a pressure on the sister, too. You need to come in here with that hair hat on, as Tommy Sotomayor calls it. A hair hat, I call it the hair helmet, you know. <laughs> I call it genius. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it's a big deal. You got pressure coming from a lot of ways. And I think wherever the money is, sisters follow that. If there's a husband who's taking care of all of that, they'll listen to what he has to say. Uh, yeah. If it's the boss controlling the bio survival tickets, they're going to listen to what he has to say. I could be wrong. We've got Veronica Conway on the line. Do you believe that the sister's confidence and power is associated with her makeup kit? Can you go deeper on that? Here's what I think. And, you know, uh, bear with me because <laughs> I have a few thoughts on this. Yeah. We talked last week or a couple of weeks back on the Diet Woman and we talked about how our men were under assault and that our women are too. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I think we're under assault from is what you've termed as the beauty industrial complex. Um, are, it's, cause I, when you talk about, I don't think it's about self-esteem at this point. Do we lack self-esteem? Do we lack self-esteem? I think it's about self-hatred. Uh -uh. And I think that our safe self-hatred has become an industry that we support, but we don't own. No, go into that. What do you mean? Let's say more. Because if you look at, I, I, I always, because I'm, I'm a deep student of internalized racism, um, how we've been conditioned into our current state of being. And so much of the black woman's identity is tied up to economics. 
So if you look, as you were saying earlier, we spend $7.5 billion annually on beauty products. Ethnic plastic surgery is on the rise. Uh, we spend an in, we spend 70% of all uh, money on weaves and hair extensions. I think any time I see a chocolate sister with a blonde weave on, I think she has gone insane or hates herself because we can't seek. So the makeup industry is capitalizing on the black woman's hatred of herself. If that it's is an industry, it is an industry. Brandy, so, Brandy know, disagrees. Koreans Brandy pretty much, disagrees. Koreans pretty much dominate. They have a monopoly yes, they on do. Uh, hair products. So while yep. they take our money and send their kids to college, Stanford, we send our kids. We send our kids to prison. Ooh. That's three two three nine six five sixteen hundred. Get to your phone lines right now, Brandy. You know it's really tough with this one because I have a, a kind of two minds about it. I am like ultimately frustrated at people who do exhibit self hatred. I I ran into a young lady the other day. And um, we were talking about, you know, wigs and, and hair pieces. And she was saying that, oh, yeah, you know, I just wear them all the time because my hair is bad. Ha- I have bad hair under this. And I, you know, and I know what she was trying to say, but I just don't really allow those types of things because it's like, you, you know, I, I, I think that, that beauty comes in many different forms. I think that it, there's beauty both on the dark featured African American, African American, African side. And there's also beauty in other races and cultures too, that, that looks different. Um, and it, it's just upsetting when it is the mental slavery that we have been subjected to in this country. Um, Unfortunately, though, or fortunately, I think that we've come to a place where it can be um, a part of the the way. And, you know, and I, I work around artists and it is a part of your, the way that you want to express yourself. And it's it's difficult because on the one hand, I like having all the options. But on the other hand, I would never want to impress on a young sister that she's not beautiful because she has afro curly kinky hair or darker skin it it hurts my it hurts my heart when i when i see young people and and like the the girl with the bleaching cream up there who just is